Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. So in this video we're going to treat this as another kind of a cleanup and uh, misc video where we look back over all of the subjects that we kind of had to leave mid implementation and that we had kind of planned to come back to anyway. So the first things we want to do we're going to look at the player class and the level manager class. At the moment we can hit into the obstacles that we now have spawning and of course nothing's going to happen because that's one of the things we said we're going to come back and fix. So if we go into the bp underscore pawn base, uh, mine has automatically, I think the last time I was in here I was in the hit obstacles function that we've made. If yours isn't then just navigate over there and we're going to start implementing what happens when you hit an obstacle. Now the only thing we can really do here at the moment is to stop the movement of the player and to hide them. So we're not actually going to destroy the pawn because that can cause some weird issues where the uh, the game mode and things like that still want you to have possession of a pawn. What will happen in a lot of games is you'll be given like a, um, a spectator pawn or some kind of pawn to possess whilst the the main playable pawn has been removed. Rather than worrying about things like that, what we can do is we can get our player mesh and we just want to toggle the visibility. So we'll toggle the visibility of the pawn. This way we can keep the pawn in existence, which also means that if you have things like cameras which are tracking you or trying to uh, follow your position, it means that they're not going to come back with errors of certain pawns being removed from play, not existing, and things like that. Now the other thing we want to do is we're going to go to the event graph, and this isn't necessarily uh, directly in relation to the hit obstacle function but we're going to add another check on the movement because we now don't want the pawn to be movable so we're going to pull the level manager in again we're going to get the is playing boolean and we're going to use this in one of our or both of our branch checks here so just for the sake of simplicity what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag all of these and move them over just to fit in one final branch check here um, and this is just going to be very simple. So we'll do a branch check in between the first one and we want to find out if the, so this is going to be our positive check. So if the uh, level manager is still playing, if that's true, then we're going to do the other checks that we had previously. Now I'm just going to paste this same one down here. So we'll just control W that. And again, we'll just make sure that the, uh, the level manager is playing. Got this open so that we can quickly check this works. So that is working with the level manager playing and then as soon as we disable that then that's going to be what will trigger that switch and we're going to go and do that in just a moment in fact we're going to swap that around when we've hit an obstacle but back to the player quickly so once we've hit our obstacle we're going to toggle the visibility so we'll turn this off and as soon as we've updated the logic in the level manager then we will automatically have the input being disabled as well now there are a couple of other things that we're going to come back and we can add between uh, the toggling the visibility and the hit obstacle call. Cool. And just to demonstrate what I mean by that, so this is again the full project that I have. Uh, of course, like I mentioned before, people supporting me on Patreon for the certain tiers, you'll have access to this already. Uh, if not, then I'll be putting this up as soon as the project's finished. But what I was going to do is this will kind of be the last tutorial where any of the logic isn't in the game to make it kind of like fully playable so the other things after this depending on what you guys want to see is uh, i can add things like the particle system which will start as the trail and the explosion we're going to add things like that that would happen on the hit obstacle event um, and also when we do hit an obstacle i'm just going to go straight into one of these uh, i've got another camera which will pan up as well so this is just using a uh, viewport switch which is uh, quite a simple thing to do, but again, it's just one of those nice to have. So I don't know if you guys want me to spend a video doing that, because of course this is going to come down to uh, different people's projects and how you want that to work. So they're the kind of things that we could fit in between this, but just for functionality and to get things working, all we really need to do at the moment is toggle the visibility and make sure that the event graph is checking whether or not the level is still in play. So the other thing we have is we're going to go over to our level manager, We've got our game over function, and this is where we want to do the majority of the work. 
Now, another thing to mention is, again, like I mentioned in regards to kind of coding practices, I've seen other tutorials where when the player is hit, the player will stop the level from moving. It will uh, send off loads and loads of triggers to different places. But that really isn't the player pawn's role. Uh, it's not something it should really know about. All it needs to know is whether it can move and how it moves. So that's why we're doing it this way. So in the obstacle class, it's the obstacle which hits the final component, the game-changing object which is the player uh, so it's going to be the obstacle which fires off these different commands to different classes to update the state of the game so in the level manager what we're going to do is in the game over function we first of all want to set the level speed so remember this is being updated and called constantly by the scrolling movement component so if we set this to zero then that means without communicating to every different object which rolls towards the player this speed has now been set to zero so it's automatically going to stop the entire level with the, ob the obstacles anything using that scrolling component will now be stopped so we also have our b is playing variable so we can drag that in just alt drag that and this is where we're going to change this to be false so now that's going to stop the player from being able to move the pawn which is obviously still in existence but just isn't visible. This is another thing where there would be other things to cover if you wanted to go into depth in this. So I'm just going to bring the other project back a second time. So the other things which wouldn't be uh, necessary to the project, but again, if it's a nice to have and if you guys want to see this covered, I'm happy to do that, is when we hit the obstacle, I change the input mode to only react with the menu and then spawn a menu system in. So it's only a really simple thing, which is whether we can restart or quit. Um, restart obviously takes you back to the main level or the main menu and then you can start again so again if you wanted to see this kind of thing covered then there would be a little bit more logic here uh, we don't have that in place at the moment so I'll leave that for now but again just just leave a comment or something down below if you did want to see the extra sections covered um, or whether you guys I don't know this has been quite a long series so far so I don't know if you've already started making your own things if you already have your own menus and things in uh, now likewise adding things like the particle effects and some other bits like that. Uh, I don't really want to cover the particles. It's, it can be quite long-winded, but I'll definitely be providing some assets. And I'm thinking of going over a video to cover where you can download other particles and things like that for free, just to quickly add into your project as placeholders or something. Because again, um, although I had, bring this back over one more time, although I had all of that in here, this is very specific to the style that I was going for. And I can't imagine that people would want to have those kind of square particles specifically for their game if you've got a completely different theme going on. Same for the explosions and things like that. With all of that being said, uh, we now have our player moving. We can hit an ob object and that has stopped the level. I think we hit that twice, which is why we kind of toggled the visibility twice. We also need to move the player down so we can start seeing little things now which are not quite correct. Uh, the player is too high, which means it's avoiding a lot of these obstacles. But when we hit an obstacle correctly, it will remove it. And if I try and press something, I'm unable to move. And of course, you can see that the level is frozen. So the final things I'm going to do as the tidy up subject is we're going to get the player start location. So we've got our player start over in the world outline is just way too high at 182. I don't even know how it ended up there. And um, we're going to take this back down to 70. I think it starts off at 120 by default. So that now instantly looks better. It looks as though it's on the floor. The next thing we want to do is we're going to go and create some extra material. So we've already got a base material. We've got some um, colors for the orange, the gray, and the white. So we're going to quickly go back through the classes and just start adding them to the different areas because that's just really hard to see anything. We also have something happening there with an obstacle spawning too soon so i'm going to look into that and we'll fix that and of course with the materials i've just brought the other project back up so what i had going here is i wanted to make it look as though we were starting off in like a completely grayscale scene uh, which is why i've tried going for just different shades of white gray and black kind of uh, shades for the level and then lerping into an orange color just for the player and the particles just to kind of make it seem as though that one thing which is coming to life is getting the color and uh, now that's something else that i'll have to go through um and i'm going to base the materials that i make now off of those choices so i want another gray um, i'm going to keep this one as gray and i'm going to create a copy of that and call it light gray in fact i've just called that uh, flat gray light to try and keep the alphabetized naming convention and i'm going to rename this one to flat gray dark now for the dark color, the tone that I've used for this is uh, for 
the color. So I'm gonna leave this at 0.04. I'm gonna do that for the RG and the B, just so it's easy to uh, round that up, because that means then in the light color, we can come in and I'm gonna make this 0.1 on all of those again. And then in my project, I also had a black color, so I'm gonna control W this, I'm gonna call this one, it's not quite black, it's gonna be an off black color, but I'm still gonna call this flat black. And instead of 0.04, I'm gonna make this 0.03. And it does make a little bit of difference when they're next to each other, but it still adds some nice, interesting kind of contrast. So the obstacles we want to change, I'm going to close all of the other tabs for now. Uh, the first thing are the actual obstacle itself. So we'll change those on the static mesh. I'm going to give this the black material. And we also want to break up the, the floors a little bit more. So uh, I've opened up the floor middle and the floor side. We'll start with the floor middle because this is going to be nice and simple. We're going to go to the mesh and we just want to change this from the white color because at the moment, obviously, uh, it's looking a little bit too close to our player. So we can't really tell ourselves apart. Uh, although, like I said, that can be changed as well. So in the floor middle, just going to grab the material and I'm going to make this one the gray light. And then for the floor sides, we obviously have our two components. So for the side, the first thing is going to be our actual floor component, which is the gray dark. So I already have that set as I wanted. And for the instanced static meshes is gonna be the white color. Now this really doesn't matter. Uh, the basic shape material looks exactly the same almost, but I'm just gonna change this to be the MI underscore flat white, just so I know exactly which one is being used. And for whatever reason, that just needed to recompile. Okay, and then if we just take to, into account for a moment that we don't have the logic which is lerping color functionality and stuff, if we go back to the pawn base, I'm just going to quickly make a manual change to the color of this. So we're going to go back to the pawn, go to the static mesh, and we'll change this to the flat red. Uh, we can see I was going for a different color when I was prototyping this project. So I'm just going to rename this to orange, and then press play and there we go that kind of has the look that we're going for the only other thing that we want to do is the camera so i think the spring arm is at kind of the wrong angle so ideally uh, we just want this to be maybe minus 40 or mi minus 45 just so we've got a more top down view on the player i think the length at 800 might be a little bit better than 600 and um, the only other thing there we go that looks much better so it's now going to be a little bit harder to respond as things come on screen and it means that we can't see things popping in and out of existence so we're only going to see things when they're coming in the only thing that kind of gives away that something is happening is that the shadows are popping from behind us and that is easily fixable now you could do this in a much tidier way and you could try and uh, work out how much further back you wanted the level manager to be with this bounding box uh, maybe spawn extra obstacles so that it would take, uh, by pushing this further back, you could then allow extra objects to be spawned in the world and just have more floors in place at once. Now to avoid all of that, I'm just going to find the light source, which is currently pointing down and uh, from behind us. And I'm going to rotate this so it's the other way. And now, because the light will be shining a different direction, we won't see the obstacles where the shadows are being lost because that hasn't happened yet because the shadow is in a different direction. So the final thing is trying to work out why when you're in the middle lane, we are automatically having the player being toggled, which looks as though it's being hit and there shouldn't be an obstacle there. So I'm gonna look into that now as well. Okay, so that took a little while longer than it probably should have done to work out what was happening. And it's actually really silly. And it's a bug that we kind of created early on in this playlist. So what I've done is I've gone back and I've started printing out what we're hitting. So first we hit obstacle, then one, then two, and we're toggling because we've not told it just to turn the visibility off. We have told the logic to keep toggling the rendering of the player. And that's kind of what gave me the hint what's happening is that in the very base spawner class, so back to spawner base, we have our spawn actor function. Now this was all perfectly well and good for the floors because it didn't matter whether or not these were interacting with the player, but everything is basically being spawned for a millisecond at zero, 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 which is now overlapping with the player start which is 0070 so any large enough obstacles 
which are all of them, are starting off here. They're colliding with the player and then being moved to their correct point, which is why when I was playing it, um, I was ejecting out and I was like, nope, they're all in their fine place. Uh, nothing's here. There's no obstacle here. But it's just spawned this one and then moved it. And obviously we've hit it in that stage. So <laughs> that was that was pretty silly. So we're going to fix that. And quite simply, all we need to do to fix this is in the spawn base class, we'll just give all of these an offset of something like minus 100 on the x-axis, just so it doesn't spawn in line with the player. And just double check that because 100 still seems to be overlapping, which makes sense based on the size of the player. Uh, but then certain other classes, it seems, will have a problem. Now this is a really good thing to kind of, I'm going to leave this in because this is an issue you can get if you don't pay 100% attention to your class inheritance. So we're going to try something similar, but I think it's looking as though one of the floor classes takes in the default location. Okay, no, so we've, we're okay with that because we, we, we are hard coding the Y axis on the floor classes at some point. But you can see that one of the floor classes, it seems the side ones, are taking the parents zero axes as just leaving that as standard because it was fine. So in fact, just to be safe, I'm gonna leave the X and the Y and I'm just gonna spawn everything lower because I know that we're always setting the Z axes to zero because we want everything to be flush. So I can do it on the Z axes. That means none of the class inheritance will have a problem. It means that the obstacles will always be spawning lower than the player. And then we are fine to just carry on as we were. And now if we hit an obstacle, then boom, we've lost the player. Uh, we've lost control of the player as well and everything's working perfectly fine. Now certain places like that bring back up the bug that I mentioned previously, where we've got this little gap in the floor, which I still haven't been able to fix. It, it really does seem as though just Unreal's determined to do something really weird every time it gets to moving the tile, which was at the end of the queue. So yeah, really, really stumped on that one. But that is, uh, as far as like tidying up goes, that is pretty much everything in place. So we've got the kind of the core loop now, you can start the game, you can move around and you've got the fail state whether you hit when you hit an obstacle. So like I mentioned earlier, do let me know if you wanted to see the uh, implementation of things like the particles and uh, really, really rudimentary, simple menu systems. And also things like, uh, and the possessing of a, a different kind of death camera, just so you could see a little bit more of the level. Otherwise, this is pretty much the project wrapped up. So that is uh, all of the concepts that we've looked at here. We've got things like function libraries. We've had our look at interfaces, class inheritance, and we've also just got to see class inheritance going wrong. So do be careful with that. Um, and the approach that I think a lot of people tend to take when making an endless runner. So this was just to, to give another option for when creating endless runners. Uh, anything I make past this, I guess I'll just class as kind of bonus material, uh, bonus content for the tutorials. Otherwise, that is pretty much the project wrapped up. If that's what you wanted to get out of this, then you should be good to go with your own project. So I'll leave that video here for today. As always, though, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.